Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 2 of season 2 of the Let's Build series. Right now, I am destroying the tower. Not really though. It seems really risky to do this, but sometimes it's just the easiest way to get to the bottom here. I'm currently taking out this rail and replacing it with one that's higher up, right there, just so the chain lines up better. But right now, it's pretty crazy. This rail is a lot better, and moving the rail up like that does affect how smooth it is. It's a lot smoother than it was before. I also have these rails in the middle just to prevent the chain from moving too close to the other one. What I have to do right now is hook this transmission up to here. So I'll have a gear right there and I'll get that. Hopefully it can move closer than this, so right where that is. But I think right here it would also be fine. I wanted to show the inside before completely hooking it up. I found out how to make the switching mechanism be on this side instead, so now it's a lot more compact. I had to do this because it was running into the yellow gear if it was on the side that it used to be on. Here's what it looks like inside of there. And like I said before, the motor is going to be right on this rod. Here it is hooked up but I haven't tried it yet, so we'll see if it works. Okay, for one thing, it's not moving in the right direction. I have four motors, and it turns out these for these two, the teeth on the worm gear are going up, and for these two, the teeth on the worm gear, worm gear go down, so I'll just hook one of these up, and it'll go in the right direction. I could also arrange the motor to where goes like that and that would also reverse the direction. Let's try this again. It came out right there. So that's how it's moving. I can tell that it's not really moving as smoothly as I would want it just because of the way the chain is on the red gears. I might be able to fix that by making the chain slower. I'm not really sure how to make, or how fast to make that yet, but I'll figure that out later on. Here's the transmission. I guess I could switch it off like that and like I said before this side is going to be the hand crank used for teaching the robot so I can spin it like that or I can hook it up to the motor I found out how to make it smoother. I put this upper thing right here on the tension wheel, and so it doesn't bounce up and down like it used to. If that isn't there, then... You can see it bouncing up and down, and that makes it um, more smooth, and you can even hear it down below. So I'll put that back. I 
I've also added these rails on the edges here just because it's a lot smoother as far as shaking that way. I also offset one of those pairs of gears so they aren't at the same level anymore um, vertically. That helps also with the uh, making the tape more smooth. I left the motor on for a while and it takes a minute and 40 seconds for the chain to go all the way around and come back to the beginning. This means that for a minute and 40 seconds the robot can be moving continually and this doesn't take into account any pausing which I'm going to talk about later on. So if any part of the robot is currently moving it can do that for those um, a minute and 40 seconds. I think that's a good length of time so the program can be that long and then when those um, when the time is up it will restart from the beginning and restart the sequence. You might have noticed this right here that I haven't explained yet and this is what's going to read the pins on the tape. Notice that there are actually two pins on each of these and the only reason they're so bulky is to keep these connectors from turning around. And these things are going to alternate in direction. It's kind of hard to do with my hand, but it'll go like that and then like that. And it'll have three positions, so it'll have the forward, neutral, and reverse. And each one of these is going to be hooked up to this um, switch right here. It'll probably take up this area right here. It would be easier though to just build it first than try to explain all of it. So I will get to doing that and I'll come back. First I had to come up with a way to make this lock in three different positions instead of only two like before. So I have these orange splicers because they have a very small um, piece at the top of them and it just slides in between them and that's the neutral position and we have the forward and reverse positions as well on either side this rod right here is actually flexible you might be able to see that it's slightly bent outwards and that allows it to better snap in place otherwise this whole thing wouldn't really make much of a difference and here is, well, I put this output shaft on it, but you can clearly see that this is neutral because none of the gears are engaged. It is right in between. But now it is engaged. I decided to make this part a little bit wider so that the levers from here can link up directly to here instead of having to go over there somewhere which is going to be better for making it stronger and I also decided to move the detent down in here which is just another word for the locking mechanism perhaps you can see it but there are two it's just like the other one where there are two orange splicers and it goes into different positions. I might have to move it closer to where the gears are because there is some um, flexibility right here, it going back and forth. And if you move it just right, you can kind of hear the gear um, grinding on this gear but I'm not really sure if that'll be a problem and besides it's not going to move that fast anyway I'm calling this section the reed head or the reed assembly so if you hear me say that that's what I'm talking about I think this is a pretty good working version it uses quite a lot of leverage from here to there because the movements here are so small so you can see it's switching there that's if a pin goes on this side it'll switch that and if we want to switch it back to neutral we need 
the pin to go on this side. So that'll do that. And then if we want to go that way, we can have another pin on that side. And then back to neutral will be on this side. So I will try to demonstrate that. It's kind of hard because I can't put the tape back this way after adjusting the pin because it would just run into it like that. So I'm kind of having to reach down below. Okay, I set some of the pins. Let's see it working. So that goes that way. And we have another one coming on this side. That's back into neutral. Here comes another one on this side. And that just pushed it all the way that way. Sometimes it looks like that one did not make it go back all the way. Like it was supposed to. Let's see if I can figure that out. Oh, I think it did. It just had a pin right after it. So if you do that, you switch it to neutral, and then you go right back to where you were. I should actually motorize it to test it fully. I think that was it. I'll have to rewatch the video just to see how well that worked or if it didn't work. I think I saw something mess up, but that might have been because this just fell down when it was supposed to stay in position. And I'm going to have to um, do a braking system for that, but that's not really what I'm working on right now. Looking back at the video, it was just the, the shaft um, going down because it was way more on one side. So I have um, hooked up more pieces here, so now I won't do that anymore. Let's try this again. Should be going right about now. Yeah. So it looks like it worked that time. That's really cool how it just moves and then stops and can do whatever we want with it. I probably haven't explained what I'm actually going to do with this output. I plan on making a um, chain hooked up this way and going out to where the actual robot arm is. And like I said earlier, there will be three motors and this motor, for example, will be used to control just one joint of the robot. So for example that could be the joint at the base and I already showed how I plan on making the arm configuration. So that way when it, the rod or when the shaft is turning in one way let's say it turns 180 degrees and then I want it to stop that will turn the arm the base of the arm 180 degrees in that direction or in that whatever direction I want. That movement right there was two pins placed ten chain links apart, so now now I'll be able to figure out, looking at the angle of this, um, how, how precise I can make this rod turn as far as like how many degrees. Looking back at the video, it looks like each chain link will give us 56 degrees of rotation on this, so that's about 45 degrees, so about like that. I don't really know if that's precise enough, but I was perhaps planning on gearing this rod down, which would make the output go even slower and get us um, more precision. What I'm going to try now is I'm, I've been adjusting the tape right here in the back. We have the pin going that way, then right after that it goes into neutral 
then it starts going that way, then right after that it goes to neutral. So right now, and you can see the pattern going up, and I'm doing that in order to test the minimum distance that we can register on here, because it would be nice if we could have it be so um, precise that we could have a pin going that way and then that way right afterwards. So it basically switch on and off really quick. Comes. Okay, that seems like it worked, and it started switching right when I turned it off from one that I previously put on. For this next test, I'm making the pins alternate one right after the other, like that. And this will make the output go like that, and then stop for a little bit, and then go again and stop. Okay. It's doing other things besides what I said it would do because I haven't reset those pins. I think that's just about enough for this episode, but before I go, I decided to make this part not here, so just make it more compact, because I decided I didn't need that if I made this crossbar right here really strong. So now there's even less um, deformation than there was before, and I don't have the motor attached, so I can't turn the motor on, but there it is switching back and forth. And that's how I have the locking right there. I've been playing around with trying to make the tape faster. Let's see if I can switch it over there. It's hard to do with one hand. Oh well. So before I geared it down, so that means I made it go um, slower than the motor. With this one it's going faster and it just flies really fast. I forgot to record the video but it just you can't even really tell one pin from the other um, that I think that's just too fast because it creates some grinding on this gear and since that gear is pretty weak I don't want to strain it too much I might have a way around that and I'll cover more of that in the next episode but just um, to explain why I want to make that faster is the faster this tape is the more accurate we can make the output in the robot. We can also make this shaft slower but we do want the robot to move as fast as possible instead of just moving super slow because robots don't usually move like that. Thank you for all of your comments on the last episode. I'm glad that there are other people who have interest in this project, and I hope you continue to like the episodes that follow. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.